now having been on this meal plan of just basically eating so much more. It was written by my dietitian, um, but if anything, I've added a lot more to it. And yeah, so it's been a week of that. Um, yesterday was the one day from all of the days where I really struggled. Um, I just felt puffy and I just felt like all those doubts were kicking in again of why why the heck am I doing this? I think all of my instincts at the moment have been geared towards losing weight or been geared towards keeping my weight at a certain level. And now that I'm fighting against that and I can see the changes in my body start to sort of come to show, that is freaking scary. I feel like my body is doing its its own thing and I have no control over that and with eating disorders we thrive off of control we thrive off of being able to manipulate how much we put in our mouths what our plate looks like um, how much weight we can lose in the week and to not have any control over our body or over my body I yeah yesterday it just shit hit the fan really. I started off well. I had my breakfast which was um, Weetabix and then I had banana blueberries, some yogurt and some milk and then it just went pee tong then. I, I don't know what happened. I think I freaked out in my head and I was like nope you know way day is coming up you need to restrict um, and it's just yeah, yesterday was a bit of a struggle, but I'm on it today. I'm going to follow my meal plan. Um, I've already had my breakfast, which, which was, I had some oats, banana, blueberries, and oh, I've started getting back into peanut butter, which is actually really, really nice. For so long, I've seen peanut butter or any sort of like nuts. I've just been so scared of them because I know that they're so calorie dense. Even though they're so nutritious, they're so full of vitamins and minerals, vitamins... God, I sounded really cockney there. Um, although they're so full of vitamins and minerals and good fats and protein, I've just seen them as this demon that just houses all of the nutrients that anorexia doesn't want. And so I've stayed away from them, but I'm having peanut butter on my um, on my porridge, on my Weetabix. Um, and yeah, it's actually really nice. I'm all for the crunchy, not so keen on the smooth. We've actually run out of crunchy, which is a bit annoying, but I'll show you the brand that I've been using. You can see it's a bit battered, but it's called Whole Earth, and it's so nice. Um, but then I also want to reiterate as well, even if you do go for the peanut butter that isn't natural, that you know has the palm oil, that has the sugars, that's okay as well. Um, I'm trying not to fix it too much on healthy foods, but this is what was in the cupboard and actually it's out of date, which is pretty grim, but it still tastes okay. Yeah. I also want to say as well that although this is what I'm eating, like everyone is so individual and for years I've been looking at so many people on YouTube, Instagram, and I've seen, you know, what they eat. And I'm just like, how the hell can you eat that much in recovery? Like my body's not like that. I can't eat that much without ballooning and I've always always compared what I eat to other people <sighs> but you just need to realise that it's your body, you're composed of different cells, different DNAs, so many different qualities about you that is so not reflected in what other people are doing. It's so hard to get yourself out of that like oh my god, she is eating so much more, how can I eat that much? It's so hard to get yourself out of that mentality. But right now I'm just focusing on, this is me, this is what I need. And I just want to reiterate to you, you know, just because I'm having this doesn't mean that you should be having it or what you're eating is inadequate. This, this is my body. Um, I need a certain amount of calories for me. You need a certain amount of calories for you. But then at the same time, you know, try not to get yourself calorie counting either. You know, I'm trying to stop myself from doing the calorie counting. That was hard yesterday. I sucked yesterday. Just like yesterday was just such a write-off. 
but I'm back on it today. I'm gonna, you know, smash the day. I've had my breakfast. Um, I've got some leftovers for lunch. Don't know what I'm having for dinner, but I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna have enough. Um, I just wanna touch on calorie counting again. Um, I have been doing it for years and years and years and I can now look at a slice of bread, I can look at a bowl of pasta, I can look at a bowl of cereal, um, even, you know, a teaspoon of this, I can look at it and just see numbers. And so now just to look at food in a different way, look at it as nutrients and vitamins, minerals, nutrients to help my organs repair themselves, to give my muscles the energy that they need. For so long, when you're in that mentality of just calculating, you're a walking calculator. I, no, man, no, no wonder I did maths in eight levels because, you know, numbers is all that was on my brain, so of course I was gonna do maths. So to try and stop myself from doing that within a week it's gonna be impossible and yesterday proved that massively yesterday I was that's all I was doing was counting and even though I had five days of really really trying to suppress the thoughts of thinking of the numbers it still does creep back in and I'm trying to be gentle with myself and just to catch myself and to say you know stop it this is not number based anymore this is this is health based so I keep telling myself focus on the health and fuck the numbers because yeah fuck the numbers <laughs> and Megsy um who I've been following for such a long time Megsy's recovery I think it is her channel is amazing I will check it out and she constantly says that our bodies are not calculators like we should be listening to the hormonal signals that our body is giving us. You know, we're composed of all of these amazing things and we take our body for granted massively for all of the amazing things it does. And we, we try to keep overriding these hunger signals, these fullness signals, we're, we're overriding our body's natural instincts in order to suppress our body weight. And that just makes no sense. Like for someone who started such studying medicine, I, I did four years of medicine and I'm still convinced that no, my body is different. I need fewer calories to um, maintain my weight. I need fewer calories to lose my weight. I need, you know, I can't, I can't eat, eat that much because I'm just gonna balloon and it's so devious. And so right now I'm just looking at a plate full of food as nutrients. Focus on the health, fuck the numbers. So I mentioned earlier that I had a bit of a slip up yesterday and honestly I find it really hard to get myself out of it. Today I feel as though like I'm better prepared to take on the day and to sort of ignore anorexia. I just had a few sort of ideas and tips which I thought that helped me to just be like right this isn't what I want long term, I want recovery and how can I get back on track? And the first thing was I just accepted it. My dietitian has said that I am gonna slip up. I'm not a superhero in anorexia recovery. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck up and it's okay. And sort of accepting that, you're gentle with yourself then. Um, instead of having a bad day and just thinking, I can't do this and chucking all of your dollies out of the pram. So I accepted it and then today I'm feeling so much better, so much more positive and I wanna just smash this meal plan um, out of the park and just carry on with recovery. Um, another thing that really, really helps and has helped me so much is journaling. And I've actually written out a list of sort of like a why I want to recover list, which is actually quite, nice to look back over, especially when you're having a shit day. My number one is going into a bakery and buying a sweet pastry for breakfast. Breakfast doesn't need to be a bowl of porridge with water and a banana. Bosh. The second one is eating a whole pizza in Italy with no guilt attached while sipping on a glass of red wine. So I've got seven of these. I'm gonna try and keep adding two of them. 
um, but just things that I've always wished I can do but just have never done because of this virgin eating disorder. Um, I've also done a pros and cons list of recovery. In the pro to recovery is freedom, energy, being more present. Like at the moment I'm not very present, I'm always thinking of the next meal, that's all my brain has on its mind at the moment is just food. So being more present, being more flexible, like I'm not very flexible at the moment. If someone were to just be like, oh let's go for a meal and that right now and yeah, no, that, that would freak me out. You know, even if it's just like a friend calling me up and being like, oh do you want to go for coffee and a cake? Or like now and then I'd be like, yeah, I'll be there. Like that doesn't happen at the moment and I know with recovery being more flexible will will be will play a massive part in me staying there as well, me not relapsing. Being spontaneous. I think that ties in a bit to being flexible. Oh, not being as cold. I'm always so cold, which is annoying. But then in the night, I'm sweating like a pig, but I am pretty cold all the time, especially before eating a meal. And it's 12 o'clock now, and I'm feeling cold all of a sudden. And I think it's my body just being like, yeah, you're hungry, you need some food. Another pro is look forward to life, not food. So yeah, right now, and it has been in the past, my life has been dictated by food, by when I'm eating, by what I'm eating, uh, by when I'm eating, and that doesn't give much room to just live and to really enjoy life. And I know with recovery, you you can just forget about a meal, move on, and then be more present. Like I said, present is on the list. Be more holly, that is my last one. I felt like I've lost my identity a bit, so with recovery I'm hoping um, that I'm just going to be a bit more me. And then in the cons is just typical eating disorder things, is weight gain, which is, yeah, was massive fear. Um, and it's probably why I didn't stick to the plan yesterday, because I thought I'd turned into a heifer, um, but logically that is not possible. Anyway, weight gain is a con, clothes getting smaller. For so long you can fit into skinny jeans which are, you know, only suitable for age 13 children and you have them in your wardrobe and as soon as you put them on and you've gained a little bit of weight you realise it's such a trigger then to go back into your eating disorder and bad body image as well. Bad body image is daily at the moment and it's hard to just sort of take yourself away from a mirror or stop yourself from body checking, checking the size of your wrists or you know seeing how your clothes fit on your thighs or seeing how they look when you're sat down. And then another thing with recovery is, is guilt, constant feeling of guilt. But I'm trying to engrave in my brain that right now weight gain is good. Weight gain is fighting the eating disorder and weight gain is recovery. So like I'm trying to sort of like carve that on my brain. Yeah I'm just like seeing it all the time. I've also started doing a bit of yoga which helps. I know they say that mindfulness, doing a bit more yoga, being more present, feeling you know appreciating how the body moves, um, maybe will take away some of the how I interpret my body as, you know, incapable, fat, a slob, um, and sort of focusing on appreciating the movements that my body can do. So yeah, those are my tips that are helping me at the moment and sort of helping me to stick through today and tomorrow and the rest of the week. I hope that's helpful. And so I'm gonna have some lunch now. Leftovers, woo! We love leftovers.